Denver Broncos hosted the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday Night Football, and man, it was something. Broncos ended up winning the game 21-20. The Broncos' offense looked poor the whole game. Didn't come alive up until there was three minutes left on the clock and were forced to put a touchdown on the board to win. Russ and Cortland were on the same page throughout this drive and would ultimately score the game-winning touchdown with a crazy catch in the corner of the end zone. Court finished the day with four catches for 66 yards and a touchdown. Russ went 27 for 35, threw for 259, and a touchdown. Well, Lutz kept the Broncos in the game by hitting five field goals and proved that he didn't need a 12th man to save the day. Broncos defense kept on doing what it did best. The defense forced three turnovers and would keep the Vikings to field goals when they absolutely needed to. Kareem Jackson was suspended for his hit on Dobbs and created the first turnover of the game for Denver. He will serve a four-game suspension, and he is currently trying to appeal the ban. Is Kareem a dirty player? He isn't, but the style of play that he grew accustomed to and played his whole life is not accepted by the NFL today, and unfortunately for Jackson, old habits are hard to kill. I could see both sides to the argument of it being a dirty hit or not, but I don't think it was. He got away with the penalty though. That should have been a flag for Minnesota. Should have gotten a first down, and Alex Madison was going to fumble sooner or later. Josh Dobbs looked legit the whole game, and the Vikings looked almost better with Dobbs under center than Kirk Cousins. But this is also the first game I've watched all year that included the Vikings. I'm confident that the Vikings still make the playoffs and will continue to add plays that really show off Hobbs' skill. Jefferson not playing didn't affect the Vikings too much. They were ahead most of the game, and their defense locked the Broncos down for most of the game. Allowing only field goals when the Vikings would turn the ball over is insane. That was 21 points on the board that could have made this game a lot easier to manage. The Broncos tried running the ball with Javante Williams, but he only had 11 carries for 37 yards. The biggest name in the running back room was Samaj P. Ryan. He caught the ball 7 times for 60 yards and converted on 4th down. Minnesota did some cool stuff on special teams, going for it on their own 31 and having Ty Chandler pick up 31. Minnesota did everything they could to keep momentum on their side but their turnovers came back to bite them and costed them a victory. Minnesota still has an 80% chance to make the playoffs, while the Broncos have only a 19% chance. The season will only get tougher, and the Broncos will need to win gritty games like this. They need to work more on their offense, and they need to find ways to get Marvin Mims and Jerry Judy involved more. Maybe some more stuff with the tight ends too? I don't really know what else they could do, but when they run the ball well, they can control the game. But when that gets cut off, the Broncos become one-dimensional and start dumping it off or go for the deep ball. Hopefully they figure that out too. Denver almost lost the game because all they could do is score field goals instead of touchdowns. Their defense can't always be there to bail them out. If the Broncos expect to beat the Browns, they really need to make the best out of their field position and put up six. Hopefully Denver can get it together before they play. We are now 5-5 five and five and have now won four in a row. The Raiders, Chiefs, and Chargers all lost and it just felt like the best weekend to be a Broncos fan. We were able to see what glaring issues each team has. The Chargers will ruin the career of Justin Herbert, just like how they ruined Phillip Rivers. The Chargers will forever go down as a team that will always have a solid roster, but will never do anything good with it. The Chiefs don't have a single receiver that can catch a ball. Patrick Mahomes keeps trying to put the offense on his back, but a talented arm means nothing if you don't have anyone who can catch. The Raiders put up a tough fight against the Dolphins, and Antonio Pierce has the locker room behind him. Their biggest question mark is the quarterback position. Aiden O'Connell could be their guy, and this could be an overreaction, only time will tell. Thank you for everyone who is still here watching the video. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Go Broncos.